Hey folks, it's Carrie Oberbrunner and I have with me a very special friend, Shannon Waller. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Carrie. It's awesome to be here with you. Well, listen, I feel like you're one of my heroes and I, I mean that. Um, I still remember the very first time I met you. You probably thought I was a weirdo, but <laughs> but um, we were in Toronto. I was brand spanking new and strategic coach and there was this mixer um you know like this what do you call it i don't know uh we social, social get together yeah social get together and i had been listening to you for years because of the the you know the audiobooks and stuff like that so i was i was very familiar with you and i didn't know any other any other people so i pretty much talked with you a lot of that night and i i found out that your daughter runs i still remember yeah, your daughter runs and we had a great chat, but but we got to be friends mm -hmm. and um, you have two amazing books Thank you. and we're going to talk about those books. And here's what I would love people to uh, share in the comments here because we have people joining us already. We are going to talk about an edgy topic today. Mm -hmm. So one of these is multiplication by subtraction. And I love this subtitle, how to gracefully let go of wrong fit team members. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's pretty edgy. It is. Um, the word graceful is fairly important to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because because let's face it, you know, most people are not fit for life in terms of a workplace environment. Mm -hmm. yeah. You agree? Yeah, totally agree. I mean, we're really lucky at Strategic Coach because we have a lot of very, very, very long-term team members, 10, 15, 20 um, July will be my 30th year. Wow. <laughs> so you are the rare exception. Yes. Except that we have a whole environment based on unique ability. So, and that, so that allows for enormous amount of freedom and opportunity and growth with team members, but most companies aren't like that. Um, but multiplication, by the way, you're one of my heroes too. Thank you, you very much. Multiply me, which I love and strategic coach, which is super cool. Awesome. And I just remember you being very well dressed. Time well, thank you. Thank you. you, you much. So, you, you, you know, when you're bald, you have to compensate some some way. <laughs> you so, got, you've got presence. You're, you're good. Thank you. Um, but it's it's been a great collaboration so far. And so but multiplication by subtraction, it's my second book. Uh, first one was called the Team Success Handbook because I got actually super frustrated because mm -hmm. I love nothing more than my passion. My passion is entrepreneurial teams. I started our strategic coach team programs in 1995, right? So long time, you know, it's my jam. And I got so frustrated because I would go in and often meet with entrepreneurs and they would introduce me to one of their very senior team members, mm -hmm. team members and I would get this reading, read from the person that they were in it for their reasons, not the company's. Ooh. And I remember calling it out a couple of times in this one particular situation. I won't name names because they might hear yes. <laughs> conversation subsequent. And I'm like, this guy's not on board with your future. He's here for his reasons, not yours. He goes, no, no, no. He gave me all the lo logical head reasons. Two years later, he goes, um, Shannon, you were right. I was like, I know. <laughs> so that was actually my impetus for reading the book because I, I – Wow. You know, I care about entrepreneurial companies and I do, I hate it when people try and take it sideways for their own reasons. So you spotted it. And folks, I want you to listen because a lot of you are building teams. Mm -hmm. We have Jill all the way from um, London. Wow. We have Rochelle from Scotland. We have, oh yeah, we got a big international crowd here. We've got others in the UK. So here's the point. You, some of you are building teams right now. Mm -hmm. Shannon's material and I'm not just saying this because she's here. Shannon's material is so important that it's literally part of our onboarding training now. Mm -hmm. So before people come on, they go through the team success series, but talk to us about, about this one here. I'm getting confused here. Talk to us about this one because you're able to tell if someone's a wrong fit. Yeah. I suppose telling someone's a wrong fit means you know need to know what's a right fit. What page are you on? Well, page 34, 35 has a checklist of how you. It, it's oh my gosh. <laughs> it's my favorite part of the book. The one just jumped out at me because we hired a wrong fit person years ago because they can't keep pace. I go fast. And, you know. and I had an assistant who, who nothing against her. She was great. 
but I, I literally like, I, you know, and it, and it was, a, it was tough. Yeah. And it actually, and there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And there's really three, three ways that it can be a misfit. Call it that way. And by the way, these do not mean that people are not good people. No, maybe I'm a bad person. And, and I was yanking her around. Totally. It just means they're not a right fit for you or not a right fit for your company. So you this is, and, and I, and I deeply care about people. So this yes. is not about making someone wrong. It's just recognizing when it's not. And if anyone's familiar with Dr. Henry Cloud, he wrote a brilliant book, Boundaries, which I actually just ordered the other week. But he wrote another book that completely inspired me called Necessary Endings. Mm. And this is, and I, it, you'll see it's his first inscription in the book. This book is actually Necessary Endings Applied to Entrepreneurial Teamwork. Oh, that's, that's, that's what the book is. So total read that book. It's a brilliant necessary endings is amazing because it, but it talks about how to think about when you, when you have a clue as to when someone's not right fit. And there's really three areas. It can be a, a personality misfit. Um, and that's important. And oftentimes you can actually move that person within your company. So if you, if you have someone super introverted on the front desk, yeah, you know, not, that, not that a lot of us during COVID have a front desk right now, but you, right. Can, you know, then that's, you know, then that just kind of makes sense. So personality matters. Um, pace. Pace. Which has a lot to do with cognitive mental horsepower, you know, and I used to think that everyone was pretty much the same. Turns out I was wrong, you know, and so if you've got a fast brain, you need someone who can keep pace with you. And Actually, there's a fun story. So a client that I, I met him kind of like not, not at the social meeting, but the first workshop. Sure. And I'm like, and here was my expression, quite casual. I said, dude, you are wicked smart. And he, I was brought over because he has some team issues or lack of a team. Yeah. I'm like, you need to hire people who are at least as smart as you are. Now, it took him two and a half years to believe me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always hiring wicked smart people. I wouldn't normally talk quite that casual, yes. but it seemed to fit. So really appreciating if you've got a fast brain, you need other people around you with a fast brain or you just irritate the heck out of each other. Yeah. So what's the point of that? Wow. And then, okay. and then the third one is where there is what's called a cognitive misfit for the role. So mm -hmm. how, with the, how their mental energy plays out, what's called their striving instincts. And this is measured by Colby, K O L B E.com. Yes. Um, if it's a misfit for the role, like I can tell you, you know, 35, hundred roles that I would be a terrible fit for based on how I naturally strive and a few that I'm a really a right fit for. And so, you know, you can have someone with all the right, great personality, great intelligence, great training, great experience who don't do the job the way that you need it done. So I'm not a very specific detailed or systematic person. Don't have me diffusing bombs and don't have me running the accounting system or trying to track accurate inventory. Yes. The amount of mental energy it would take for me, first of all, is exhausting. Wow. Second of all, I'm not actually convinced I would provide a really good result. And I don't want anyone blown up. <laughs> so. But but this is so important because a lot of times IQ tests, yeah. and that's what we were used to in school. Usually people think I'm smart or I'm not. And by the way, I was not in the smart classes and I'm not being, that's not like false humble. I, I was not in the smart classes, but I grew up thinking that I was not smart. But what you're saying is that we're all smart in a certain way, yep. but we're not all the right fit in that job. Like, yeah. get, get, I know you, I know you have, you know, 30 years at strategic coach, give us examples where someone was, um, don't say names, but where someone is a right fit right? or someone was a wrong fit, like give us some background. There's one person in our company who, this was interesting because she was a right fit for the company. She's been there as long as I have. So some of you will know that. And, but she had a whole bunch of administrative roles mm. in the company and she had a twin that worked for our company. And, um, it, it, and so when when she heard from her twin about strategic coach and she completed the Colby profile uh, when we brought that in, which was a long time ago now, um, they end up having the same Colby's. Well, actually, twins don't almost they're twins, but they don't always have the same Colby profile. And uh, so she just they knew each other really well. So she answered it kind of as though she was her sister. Well, that didn't turn out to be exactly a right fit. So it wasn't that she wasn't good. Sure. But it wasn't, she wasn't like thriving. Anyway, eventually she redid her Colby. Mm. And Colby has a really good way of picking up when there's a bit of a misfit. Yes. Um, or it's 
in transition it's called um anyway and that turned out she was a much longer what's called quick start anyway now she is like a rock star salesperson oh. and a brilliant speaker and thank goodness we had a way to kind of reorient because yes. when we were backstage doing admin stuff just wasn't it was okay but that's so freeing though imagine what you did for that woman because a lot of us probably think i'm the problem uh it's my fault i'm a bad employee and what you're saying is you're a different employee yes. yeah and sometimes you've got someone with incredible relationship skills but not in a relationship skill well not in a position that uses their relationship skills oh so they're being underutilized yeah and they're dying they're dying because they're so far backstage maybe they're handling the numbers maybe who knows what role they're in, but they don't actually get to interact with other people. Other people are the total opposite. You know, they're in a relationship role and they really have no business. They have no mental or, or emotional energy. For that. <laughs> it doesn't work so well either, but that, but the wrong fit story. So there's kind of the right, yes, fit, the right fit. This one. The wrong fit story was fascinating. It's actually what was my clue about the, the cognitive and how important that is. So this is someone who had the right experience, right? Who had the perfect Colby for the role um met on the personality measures mm. but after well I'm, I'm not sure when the crack started to show with colby it's usually around three months but this this took longer it's about a year so well it just started to not work yeah well if you know that the personality is correct and the striving instincts are right but the, the person's still a they're frustrated or b or and frustrating <laughs> to work with there's only one thing left so if you, you know, and that's the upstairs part, you know, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the mental horsepower and it was, and then I'm like, oh, maybe, it's, maybe everyone isn't really, and they were, by the way, supporting, you know, two of the, the smartest people in our company. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was my clue that cognitive mattered more than I had been giving it. Like, it, wow. so we do profiles before we hire anyone mm. and there we measure for cognitive, which I always relate to the gut. This is how you you know, your instinct is to strive, your heart, so your personality, your preferences, but then also head. So we use Colby, we use um, DISC, and we use um, Strengths Finder after they're hired, DISC before, Strengths Finder after. And then finally, we added Wonderlick before they're hired. And Wonderlick is actually it was Kathy Colby's father, <laughs> which is kind of interesting um, for psychometric testing. And, and so they have a, a good paper and pencil instrument that is inexpensive and fast and that measures kind of mental horsepower. Wow. So we added those things in once we realized it, it mattered more than we thought. And we need all kinds. Mm -hmm, 100%. I mean, you don't, that right? That's what makes a good team. Not saying, uh, I think to the, you know, football illustration here, you don't want a team of 11 quarterbacks. It's going to be a horrible no. team. No. Um, and even in football, you have different body sizes based upon the position. So, so what you're saying is that, um, I think, well, I know this to be true to you about you, you have major self-awareness and uh, I mean that in a great way. And I, I think I do too. Um, I didn't always, but why is it so important that a leader is self-aware? It's, it's one of the most important things ever. If you're self-aware, you know, your strengths, you also know your non-strengths. I don't find the word weakness is particularly interesting. It, but it knows, like you know, the cards you've been dealt, and you can play your best hand if that makes sense. Uh, it also, though, if you have self awareness, if you have awareness of yourself, you know where you where you thrive and succeed, and where you don't, then you can be much more intentional about how you place yourself. And I always like to say, please use your powers for good. Yes, <laughs> like talking to people with all the profiles because you can tell I like them. Uh, but then also, it makes you much more sensitive and aware of other people. If you mm. think you and everyone else are the same, you're not looking for uniqueness. You're not looking for how someone's special. You're not looking for someone's unique contribution. Mm. So self-awareness actually creates other awareness. And with that, you can build an incredible, what we call a unique ability team. But if you're clueless about yourself, first of all, you're going to beating yourself up for where you think you should be better. And yes. you're not going to be playing to your strengths, which is yes. actually, frankly what your team wants you to do. They, they don't want you making a mess wow. here and over here. They want you doing what you're supposed to be. And that actually what's, is what gives them confidence and security. So, this is so good. And, uh, you know, Patricia basically is saying, 
that she she says just straight up, I love this. Yeah. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm not going to share names here because we're all protecting confidentiality here. But I will say that at one point in my life, I worked for someone who was not self-aware. The entire team tried to help this leader understand that they weren't good at the traditional role that society says they needed to do. Yeah. And rather than that person be like open to it, I feel like they tried to pretend to themselves. They weren't fooling any of us, but they like they pretended to be good at that role. How devastating is that for a team? It's it's horrid for everyone involved. I don't, I mean, and, but there's so much pressure, especially if you were in any kind of a traditional corporate or bureaucratic environment. I'm sorry. There is no reward for saying, guys, I'm really not very good at this part. Yeah. You're going to be land-based. You're yeah. going to be criticized. You better keep that under wraps. So like an example, a CEO who maybe is horrible at speaking, but they think I'm the one who has to present and therefore it's painful for everybody. Oh, it's the king's speech. <laughs> you know, it's it, it's that awkward for everyone, you know, when clearly that person wants no business being up there. Uh, but it's, but that person might be a brilliant strategist or someone Ooh, who's great at building, you know, some, like one on one or strategic relationships on a much more personal level. And now public is speaking is one of those things that people say you all, almost everyone has to get decent at. Um, but is it worth the days and weeks of mental energy yeah to do that. It's, insane. it's yeah you know i would suggest a team presentation where the person's up for a minute and says hi guys i'm here i exist i'm you know and let me bring in my team yes i empowered me. shannon to speak today yeah yeah exactly so that there are way there are strategies around that still letting people know that you're alive and well <laughs> and there but i don't think I don't know. Is how you use your mental energy? I think is incredibly important, and and emotional energy and all the other types. So people using it strategically is far more important to me than anything else. One one aha because I'm always learning things, mm -hmm. and I know you are too. One aha for me lately was I don't enjoy, nor do I think I'm good at leading our team meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So like I don't mind leading a meeting for a client or prospective client, because then I kind of know the agenda and this type of thing. But I can be the worst. In fact, someone calls it squirreling. Okay, <laughs> like we have somebody whose job on our team is the squirrel wrangler. Amanda is her name, she might be watching this. Is but, a little lasso? You know, I wanna know if there's a little stick with a little it, it's, it's a It's a spike with a bat, they hit me up. But, but I've now walked into meetings in such a refreshing way and saying, all right, who's, who's leading this meeting? It's yeah. not me. Yeah. And, and I feel like I'm able to be more present. Do you have anything that you've learned about yourself in the last 12 months mm -hmm. that you've kind of said, you know what, I need to either give that up or I'm really good at that. And I didn't know that. One of the things that's been, that I am passionate about is I, and it is one of my unique abilities, 10 best habit statements. I know you know what that is. Oh yeah. Is what is really important to me is helping to create, build, reinforce community. Yeah. So one of the things I love doing, just a, a work detail, but so we've got people who register for the strategic coach program, but who may not start could be 12 hours, in which case they're fine, or it could be six to 10 weeks mm. you know, before they actually get started. Well, it's easy to A, go, oh my gosh, what have I done? Or just lose momentum or lose focus. I mean, we send some stuff, but yeah. you know, so we started, came up with the idea. I don't think it was my idea, actually. Someone else did it, but I get volunteered for a few things because I'm, I don't need a lot of preparation to yes. do certain activities uh, per my Colby. And so I did the first one and I loved it. It was so, so fun. And I love bringing people into the fold and I love introducing them to how we coach. Interesting. To meet one another. And I'm good at getting everyone engaged. And and so that's- so it was like an onboarding for new yes. people. Interesting. Yeah. So then we expanded from one that we kept repeating to now we have three, presuming someone's, you know, they could do three different ones if they've got three months in between before there's any repetition. So just, I mean, I just- that's cool. I'm reminded how much I love doing that, 
Um, I've known for a long time how, sorry, swear words come to mind that are not appropriate. Yeah. How crappy yeah, I, yeah. Um, at anything to do with scheduling. Yeah. Like, I, I follow, a, I'm, I am brilliant at following a schedule. I will, I'm doing what I'm told. D creating one doesn't happen. No, so no. I, can do, I can do one back and forth and that's it. And then I'm done. But it, but it, but it weakens you. Oh, which is what a weakness is. It weakens you. Yeah. And probably everyone around you is frustrated. They're just oh. like, just give me it. Just let me do it for you. Well, I well, hope, hopefully you've got people like that. But I, they're like, how come this isn't done yet? How come this isn't? Oh done yeah. Yet? How where you're behind on this? And I'd be working until eleven thirty every night. Now I have a brilliant strategic support partner who's my compliment, Nicole. Yep. Nicole, yes. Who arranged this today, by the way? Yes. Um, who's in my compliment in terms of her Colby profile, in terms of her personality, um, very highly intelligent, probably much smarter than I am, and uh, it works brilliantly i she stays in her lane i stay in my lane and we are brilliant partners together um we, we met this morning and she goes here's your day here's your week yes she'll, and later on she'll help me get on and figure out the urgent emails so i need hand holding over there i don't need hand holding to talk to 200 or 2000 people right right but right. with some schedule or email i need hand holding <laughs> but but i'll tell you what that takes it takes humility well, sure. and and I feel like there's a lot of leaders. Uh, when I first started, I certainly would think, oh, I'm above that. I don't need, like, in fact, I probably did think that person, they can't schedule, they can't check their email. And, and you know, I should be able to do all that. Why is that like the biggest lie? Why, why are some people watching this right now and they're actually being prevented from higher levels of success because our buddy Dan wrote a book who, not how. Yep. And they're trying to be the who. Oh, yeah. They're trying to be the who. T tell us that. Like, why does it take humility? Uh, well, it takes two things. It, take, it takes that self-awareness. Know thyself. Wisest words pretty much ever spoken, in my opinion. And so if that means you know where you're the who. Mm -hmm. So the whole book is who, not how. Well, you know, where if you're... In one, two, maybe three different types of activities or endeavors, you are the right person. You have the unique ability. Mm. In everything else, start looking for the other who's. Yes. You know, because if it's not your how, it's going to take you forever. You go to the bottom of the learning curve, and it's a steep, long climb. Yes. You can short circuit the goal achievement process if you simply tap into the right who's. So it takes two things. It's not. It's humility and confidence. It's confidence about where you make your biggest and best contribution, which mm -hmm. would be that narrow. You know, yes. Center of things. Please be confident in those things. Do not be wimpy. Do not be. Don't delegate your strengths. He says that. You say that. Or do not delegate your unique ability. Yeah, yeah, that's I had it. A yeah. client do that once. That was. I'm like, what do you? Did you delegate? He said, Shannon, I delegate everything, just like you said. I'm like, but he said my results are terrible. I'm like, you didn't delegate sales, did you? He goes, Yeah. I'm like. That's your unique ability. Wow. I'm like, he's like, oh, oops. And then next quarter he was back to normal. Yeah, I, was like, I love that. Do not delegate your unique ability. Um, so yeah. So you need confidence where you are best placed. Like you have to know. Yes. You know, if 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 you've got some gifts, you know, that's what is yours to contribute. Wow. Please be very confident in those mm -hmm. and then be very, very humble about everything else. So I'm sure some people are like, oh my gosh, you can't handle email. I'm sure some people are thinking that right now. Oh, yeah. It's true. And I have I have zero embarrassment about that. I have no ego about it. Yes. You know, it's it's actually not, it's interesting. It's not ego. Being confident about your unique ability is not ego. And being humble about those things, it bypasses ego. So where I see people getting trapped mm. kind of the point earlier is where they think they should. And the word could, would, or should is related to one of our concepts that Dan calls the gap. So that's when you're measuring yourself against an ideal. It's actually not yours. It's not related to actually who you are. It's some externally imposed expectation that is not reflective of who who's actually in your chair. So when you start to really embrace and accept and take responsibility for how you are very uniquely put together, every one of us is unique fingerprints like snowflakes. Um, you know, then you can start to go, oh, this is where my best contribution is. This is my worst. You know, so I need I need support in the areas where I, I need help. And then I just can be really confident in the areas and stay in my lane, you know, where I, I can make a unique contribution.
Look at the look at the comments. Elise just says this is so good. Susan says don't should on yourself. <laughs> right, right. Oh, my Mich mom used to have a button that had should with a line through it. There you go. The red line. Don't should on me. <laughs> there you go. That is so true. Yeah. Uh, Michelle from Montreal says, do not delegate your unique ability. Listen, the world's going to bump up against this, though, this concept. 100%. In fact, I got to share this with you because in 33 minutes, someone's going to come to my door, one of my who's, and they're going to deliver mail from my PO box. Mm -hmm. And just someone, just someone the other day said to me, and, and I won't say who this was, but they said, wow, you really think you're big stuff. You have your own person who delivers mail now to you, hey? And 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 here's here's the problem. It's not just getting the mail. Mm -hmm. It's once the mail's open, then it's this bill, this invoice, this check, this card, this book delivered. There's like 50 tasks mm -hmm. that, oh, I'm just going to the mailbox, but now I have to do all these things. And then what happens is, yeah, my unique ability gets sucked down yeah. and now I hate my life again. Right. It's true. Well, and it's funny that delivering the mail, well, most people have a mailman. So most of us have a who to do that. There you go. So I would, go. I would knock that one back a spitch. Uh, yes. but, but it's true. There, I mean, I have a friend who said, he said, I can write a brilliant letter. Can I fold it up and put it in an envelope and get the correct address and put a stamp on it and get it in the mailbox in a timely way? He goes, no. <laughs> so, wow. You know, so it's, it's like, that's where we need help. Yes. You, know, you know, processing all the mail, it's not a small thing. No, no. And and like you say, doing those things that I could do, not only am I frustrated while I'm doing it, because I'm like, oh, I really wish I could do what I love to do, but it it takes my energy. Now, let's talk about Rochelle, because we've been here. I've been here. Mm -hmm. You you started out, I'm guessing, as a solopreneur. I did certainly for years. This is the little lie. And, and you share that story so wonderful about your first hire yeah. and how quick did you know and how quick were you saying the next thing? Tell us that story. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you just made me think about that. Um, great comment, Rochelle. Thank you. Is that so I so I used to work with another salesperson at Strategic Coach. And this is and this is I was doing my excellent but not unique ability. Okay. And uh so I used to share a part-time person. So I had like a quarter of a human. Correct. Let's be clear. And so my colleague Susan wanted to hire her own part-time person. So she said, oh, can you take over this person? Her name is Anon, brilliant woman, by the way. And she goes, can you take her over by yourself? And don't forget, I was only accepting to, to take on a, a part-time person. It wasn't even a whole full-time person, right? And I was like, oh my God. And I think I thought about it for seven, 10 days. Wow. I was stressed. It was like one of those wake up at 2 a.m. Can I afford this? Do I have enough work? What if it doesn't work out? Someone's... Like I'm responsible now for this person's livelihood, you know, at least part-time livelihood. So finally I screwed up my courage and this is, you know, make a commitment, courage kicks in. And I said, yes. And then three weeks later, after I had a non to myself part-time, I said, how soon can you go full-time? Wow. The, the leverage she provided was phenomenal. Very wow. Phenomenal. In other words, your fear of income because you were able to focus on what you're good at, your unique ability, yeah. she allowed you to generate so much more income that you're like, what am I thinking? Totally. And that's the really cool thing. When you have the right person, the right fit person, um, and that has to do with mindset. It has to do with capability. It has to do with a lot of things. Unfortunately, it's not just a single single answer. Uh, there's usually at least three. Um, but when you have that right person who's smart, who's committed, and who's got the right talents for the role, bottom line, so, then you're like the leverage that comes out, you're like, oh my gosh, I can make so much more money. Yes. And to your point earlier, like the world doesn't necessarily reinforce this. It's true, except unless you are your own person, unless you're your own business and let, or unless at least you have carved out your own little, my husband was able to do this at Bell Canada, which is the largest telecommunications company in Canada and uh massive company, but, but they actually had their business units had a fair bit of autonomy. So he was really good at this. And so some big companies, there's, there's some structure, but if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a sole proprietor, you've got room. And, he, and like me, you don't have to start off with eight full-time people. No, you know, there's some very easy, fast, efficient, cheap, 
inexpensive ways to to do that. Yes. And, but it means finding the being picky about the right talent. Um, That's so good. We I, I just see I just hired um, a seventeen year old the other day. Great. To to do um, some tribe community Facebook management and TikTok because. Oh, yeah. TikTok, seriously, oh, yeah. I love uh, your story. I'm, I'm on, I'm on TikTok now. I but, am too, but not as from. But it's not me. Right? I'm on TikTok, but it's not me. Are you dancing, Carrie? I need to know this. Um, not yet, but um, but <laughs> I, I will tell you what. This is my TikTok, and it's and it's blowing up, and I'm not on it. Oh my gosh, I love that story. And and why? Because her name's Kiara, and she's good, and um. I don't want to learn another platform. And here's what she does though. She here's what she said. She said, Carrie, I need you to film on your phone, throw a book up like that, go like that, and then go like that. And I'm like, I can do that. That's what I did. And then she turned it all into a video. Oh, that's brilliant. Is that cool? I'll show you the finished product. And by the way, I, I, I need to get you on my TikTok because I most use it to it's very entertaining, by the way. If you want to waste some time in a good way, watch to TikTok. Um, there you go. but it's hiring younger people to do like the social media and the stuff that yeah. they get. Yeah. The, and the, and they're the, they're going to do it better. They're going to be faster. They have hair. They're going to look better for me. Um, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, so let's give away a copy of your book. Okay. Awesome. So we have people jumping in all over the place who wants uh multiplication by subtraction, a very edgy, good book. Who wants a copy? We're going to mail it to them. And uh, do you want to say something? Looks like you're going to say something. You're going to say oh, something. the cool thing is, so it goes on page 3435 is a list of symptoms and then the results and cost. Um, and I had some fun writing it. So I think zombie, the word zombie comes up in here. I love it. <laughs> it's so good. For someone who's quit and stayed. Um, and then it goes through the scenarios. So, you know, there's level of difficulty. Like a one is someone you've just hired their own information and it's not working out and you're like, okay, it's just, you know, end of three months by no, no big cost. Yes. And then, then there's, you know, the six out of five is where you've got a legacy team member who's no, who's stopped growing, who is just Ooh. used to being there and that's, and they're, they're filling the space and man. their family or they feel like family. And you're like, Oh, how do, and that's a six out of five. <laughs> yes. I need to add a different category. So we go through all the different scenarios. And then at the very end, it shows you how to do it in the fact well, one of my clients did this to me. He said, Shannon, I read your book. He said, if I realized that it was only going to take 15 minutes, I would have done this a lot sooner. Oh, man. No. Well, you, you do. Honest, but yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. I mean, just like you were saying about you got the wrong person. Yeah. Um, wow. This is so good. We have, uh, look at this here. You're, you ready for this? Yeah. So just keep track. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine. I mean, it just keeps going. So a lot of people want this book. I'm going to mail a copy. Um, Michelle, you pick someone. Um, tell us where else this book is available. It's on oh, Amazon. It's available on Amazon. Yes. And you helped format it properly. So it's super easy to get. Um, and also we wanted to make it super accessible. I mean, this is a book for owners and leaders really. Yes. Um, although I do know some people who've actually um, put it on people's desks who, whose behavior was a little questionable. Ooh. And there were, and the person was like, Oh my gosh, you know, do you, are you trying to tell me something like, Oh no, just wanted you to read it. And the person shaped up like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my and there God. There actually is a right fit team member scorecard in the back. Well, yes. And, yes. So there's, and then Team Success Handbook is how to have an entrepreneurial attitude, which is also a right fit team member. So, so lots folks, of goodies. folks, I mean, we're talking, come on now, $199 in the US. It's cheap. Audiobook, paperback. I mean, it's available everywhere. Yeah. Folks, you got to check this out. Yes. And we did have the opportunity to re-release this and, and we are just so happy for you. So yeah. do yourself a favor, do your team a favor, get a copy of this. Let's, let's go now to, um, the team success handbook. Mm. Give us some, give us some gold about this. Ooh, well, this is my first book. It was actually also the easiest, which is not usually the case. Yes. I love this chart. Tell us about, 
Oh my gosh. Not just, most companies. Yes. Okay. The rest of the rest of the book took me the same amount of time as it took me to write the introduction. <laughs> yes. Because I have been coaching the 12 entrepreneurial attitude, um, entrepreneurial attitudes. So let me, I'll describe how the book came yeah. about. So yeah. I had, I had been creating mm -hmm. the strategic coach team programs in 1995 mm -hmm. and I was coaching people on unique ability and our entrepreneurial time system. And it was sinking in about this far. And I got so frustrated. I'm like, what is wrong? Why, why is this not getting across to team members? And then finally I realized some of them didn't have what we called at our company an entrepreneurial attitude. Okay. No entitlement attitude is the other part. So I, I went around and I, with a team, it wasn't only me doing this. And so, okay, what makes really successful team members here at Strategic Coach? And then what makes for some of our, team, our clients' team members be mm. really successful? And I came up with, or we came up with 12 different entrepreneurial attitudes. So good. I had made that into an exercise. And by the time I wrote this book, I've been coaching that exercise for over 12 years. Wow. So all I had to do was write down what I said in the workshops. So that was actually super easy. I had to add a little bit, obviously, because some, some of them I would focus yes. on others. But then I had to set the context. And the context is there's a massive difference between an entrepreneurial and a bureaucratic or corporate organization. And really getting clear on that. Um, because, and by the way, am I happy that bureaucracies exist? Well, for a long time, I didn't think there was, I was, but you know, I kind of want our electrical system to work without me thinking about it. Oh, that's I want, good. I want the water. I want water when I turn on the tap, like, you know, and I'm in Toronto, not Texas right now, but that's, I don't, you know, you don't want here, have to need heroes every day. <laughs> interesting. Saying, interesting. Right? So there are, there are structures systems that you want to be bureaucratic because it just works it's dependent dependable it's not actually dependent upon the unique abilities of the people in it now am i the person best suited to work in that structure absolutely not mm. so I, I need to find the opposite however there are some people for whom that's that's the right thing and i'm and bless them you know thank i'm very real appreciative for playing yes that. right so there's so there's that um, but then here's the deal though. You, you have someone in entrepreneurial or pardon me, it comes from a bureaucratic company to go to work for an entrepreneurial one. And they're like, okay, the language of business is the same, but the meaning is completely different. Ooh, so, you got an example? Well, it's, it's like, know, like how get like this to, done or something, right? Yeah. Get this done. So <laughs> in a bureaucratic organization means follow this, you know, 12 page policy and procedure manual. But in an entrepreneurial company means go figure it out. Yes. With what? With whatever you can figure out to figure out, right? Like be resourceful. So, so someone who needs the policy and procedure manual is completely like, oh, God. And someone else who has trouble following the policy and procedure manual is quite happy on the entrepreneurial side. That's that is so true. Yeah. And this is where we saw some rubs in our company early on because we would be like that. I think on your chart, you say certainty versus ambiguity. Yes. Right? So talk about that because yeah, we would we would ask this person, um, can you go create this, this uh, PDF? And right. they'd be like, what size, what colors? And we're, you know, and just like over the top. And I, in my mind, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> you know, just, just go. Yeah, exactly. Right? Or, and there's a, a thing about being able to pick up enough clues from the environment mm. to be able to go, oh, okay, well, you know, I remember so-and-so's got some PDFs on their computer that seem to work really well with clients. I'll kind of model it off that, or this is what I think is super cool. I'll give Carrie a couple of different options, but it'll be, you know, I'll, I'll put all the content in so he won't, he'll just go yes, and then we can just hit send on that one. Right? Interesting. So that, that took intuition. It's a creativity, vision, but not everyone runs like that. And that's not a bad person. No. It's just that what they're not going to be a maybe a good fit in a certain role. Well, with entrepreneurial companies, there often isn't a ton of history. Mm. There isn't a right way. There's been a couple of different ways that work to a greater or lesser degree. Some, occasionally you find out what not to do. Please don't duplicate that. Uh, but often there's so, it hasn't been done yet. So there isn't a right way. Wow. Because you don't know whether or not there's a right or wrong way until you've done it. Right? So that's the ambiguity for a lot of people is it's brand spanking new. So if you love to be create, you know, create the brand new, you know, and have a vision. And what I know is that where people have 
you know, I'm going to say unique ability in areas I don't, they have far more ideas about something than I do. Mm. I'm often quite capable of delivering something because I yes. value long-term experience. Uh, but when someone else has more creativity for it, I'm like, it's yours, right? It's just, I, that's my clue. Yes. That someone has more to bring to it than I do. Um, despite my years of experience. Okay. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty key. Well, it's like when, uh, when I started working with Dan and Babs, they brought me in to do books and marketing and stuff. And I was amazed at how they trusted me. Mm -hmm. That's a unique thing. Like, in other words, I was used to saying, okay, we can do this or this, which do you want to do? And they kind of had the approach, like mm -hmm. we hired you, you're the expert, just tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. Now, again, humility, confidence. I mean, this is the theme today. Yeah. Why why does a company work like that where they bring in the expert and listen to the expert? That's so rare. And they do that per personally too. So they, you know, two cases now bought two two separate cottages. They sold one, bought another one. And both times it was like, you know, they agreed on like Dan's like, I want it white on the inside. Okay. And then they didn't come back until it was done. Wow. And the designers were like, really? You trust us to that degree? <laughs> that <laughs> that is so rare. Never. Everyone's up like, every weekend looking at their thing. And, and yeah. Was, uh, sorry, in, in Ontario, a cottage is a cabin on a lake. If anyone needs That's to know right. that. Um, but it was like, they've never been given that degree of trust before. And, and they've done that in with everyone I know that's worked for them, both on a personal and professional basis. But they have this you know, they're so self-aware to go back to that about their own unique abilities and their own capabilities, you know, a couple conversations to set the intention or some key preferences and then have at it. So they gave me no coaching. Dan actually helped me design the first three, um, I was going to say episodes, <laughs> the first sure. two workshops for the, for the, and then, but the way Dan's brain links together concepts isn't my way. Right. But and I hadn't coached or designed before. Okay. I I'd taken a school course. That was that's how the idea came up for the team programs. And finally, I'm like, I don't like dance designs. I'm gonna. So I, that's when I became a program designer. That's so good. What the heck did I know? But I knew my audience. I knew what I wanted to convey. And then that's that's what happened. <laughs> so you just you know they've really never told me. They've never watched me coach a team yeah. program. And that was 26 years ago. 25 and a half years ago. So it's amazing when you just trust in people, give them room to grow. I mean, yeah. and let them make their own mistakes is, is yes. part of it. But, you know, the team programs are not anything that Dan or Babs ever would have created, ever. They're so clear that's not their audience. That's not their jam. Do they like having as part of coach? Yes. Yes. But, you know, I just had a lot of freedom to create what I thought was yeah. useful because we were aligned. And I, I was clearly bought into the intention of the company. It worked. Shannon, you are amazing. I just got to talk for a few minutes about you. Okay. So, so, so get ready here. Um, one thing is you're on Instagram. Yes. So Michelle is taking notes here. Pop in her handle on what is it? Shan? It's Shan Waller. Shan yeah, Waller. Shan Waller. Yeah. At Shan Waller on Instagram. Folks, I'm telling you, she's one of these people you have to listen to where else are you uh facebook, facebook you? um on facebook is shannon waller so that's easy to find me there uh if you want hmm, where else to find you me? have a podcast oh that's yeah if you want more mainline content because facebook you'll probably see my family too uh <laughs> but <laughs> in case you want to and i but i do like to repost useful things oh yeah so that could be good um, but the other place, yourteamsuccess.com is the website where you can get team resources. You can get actually the book that inspired what the exercise is based on for yeah. the team success book. Um, plus communication builder, open file syndrome, positive focus, some cool fun downloads. Um, plus the entrepreneurial attitude exercise, which is great to do with your team. You could do it on yourself, although I hope as an entrepreneur, you'd score yourself high. Just say yes. Um, but it's also great to hand to people as you're hiring them to say, just to let you know, this is what we're expecting. So if this doesn't sound like you, probably not the right home for you. Or give them the book. It's 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 designed to be cheap on purpose. <laughs> you can buy yes. that. Um, so yourteamsuccess.com. And then I have a podcast, Team Success. So which I'd love to just share current issues and thoughts that are coming up 
and it could range. I have a broad, I love to read. I also love doing author interviews. Love doing author interviews. Mm -hmm. but, uh, okay. I, I enjoyed being on it. Absolutely. Yeah. So I love curating resources that are incredibly useful and helpful towards mm. successful entrepreneurial teamwork. Uh, of all kinds, it could range from personal productivity to incentive plans to, you know, Cy Wakeman's No Ego, you name it, it's all on there. <laughs> That's one okay. you recommended for me recently, definitely. It's, she's yeah. unbelievably brilliant. Uh, so yeah, one of my one of my favorite people. So yeah, so lots of great resources of things that I find interesting and useful and cool and relevant. Um, so that's the best place to, to track me down. And Shannon was a major door opener. We, I think I told you like after that first session, I said, man, I can help Dan out. I, I just, I know I can. And you and I kind of conspired together to, to make that happen. And I'm forever grateful. You're very welcome. So I mean, thank, thank you for that. Like, but and you've helped me too. So thank you. For well, that. and I stay when Toronto's open, I stay mm -hmm. another day just because Shannon is such a great facilitator. You have this gift for drawing out. In fact, you say, who wants to be, who wants to volunteer or be voluntold, right? Like you just have all these, um, I don't know, like it's almost a playbook on how to run Mm. meetings have you ever have you ever written something on that no i've i've written uh? an impact filter on how to interview yes you have i so, have that yeah I've so because a lot of people because i interviewed dan for our inside strategic coach podcast which is really fun I'm like how someone asked how do you do that and i'm like how do i do that and then i figured it out it was so uh, but no i've not done that it's it's a function of coaching for 26 years so right um, right. But yes, that would be a very good idea. Maybe I'll do an impact. That would be good. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to say to the the crowd? I mean, everyone's walking away with, you shared at the conference last year, Igniting Souls. Everybody loved you there. Um, anything you want to share in conclusion today? No, just um, I want your team to have an entrepreneurial attitude so they can get you. I wrote this book so that you wouldn't have to actually. I hopefully explain entrepreneurs to team members so they can actually get you. This is about how to know when you have a wrong fit person on and then what to do about it. It's not always firing them, but it is a matter of placing them or exiting them if they do not share the same core values. And Carrie, I've really loved the fact that you brought up the whole point about know thyself. Yeah. Um, thank you. Because if we can all do that, I think we'll be happier. We'll create much happier environments and frankly, much more profitable and productive ones. Uh, which is what part of my mission in the world is. So thank you for bringing out that super important point. That was so good today. Last thing I'll say, I'm walking away with a whole bunch of lessons. One of them though, is that I actually am attracted to someone who knows themselves. Yeah. Meaning that when I'm seeing if I should work with someone, client, service provider, if they say, you know what? That communication style does not work. I just know that I'm not good at that style. Yeah. It's like, thank you for, for you know, like rather than, oh yeah, I'll try base camp, sure. No. I'd rather know that someone is, is self-aware. Well, I think we're really attracted to authenticity. Mm. It's hard to be authentic if you don't know who's sitting in your chair. Ooh, thought of the day, right there. We're yeah. attracted to authenticity. And we can't be drawn to someone who doesn't know themselves. That's so good. Yeah. There's one quote that I'll end with. And it was one of our clients said it about Colby, but I think it applies to what we're talking about. And his name is Peter. And he said, before I knew about Colby, but you could put any other profile in there or unique ability. He said, I thought everyone was just like me, only not as good. Oh. <laughs> Which still makes me laugh 15 years later. Yes. But it's so true. Unless you're aware, you tend to have this, I'm great. Like, my I'm way the style. Is, I'm the standard. It's yeah. the right way. And your way is bad. And it's not true. Wow. So your way is right for you. Their way is right for them. And so you don't, you're actually, you've got blinders on if, if you don't embrace a wider perspective. I'm walking away with that, that fierce humi humility, fierce confidence. It's, it's, wow. This was great, folks. Listen, go ahead, type in uh, thanks for Shannon. Um, if, if you found it helpful, get her two books. These are amazing. I love that they're uh, they're on audio too, both of them. Yes, and they're and they're super practical. I don't write things that I mean. I'm, I write yeah. in a direct, caring, and practical way. It's all yes. I'm for. 
don't ask me to write a long book. It's not going to happen. Okay. Um, so if you like, you know, clarity, that's what they're, that's, that's what they're there for. Awesome. All right, folks, we'll see you later. And uh, the thank yous are coming. Thank Take you care. so much, Carrie. Awesome. Always awesome spending time with you. You too.